Hi everyone, my name is Igor and welcome to my channel. Today I'd like to demonstrate my post-processing technique for SLA prints. Resin 3D printing is a hot topic these days. However, some people may get scared away from it by the um, uh, somewhat involved and messy post-processing step. Uh, you see, you cannot just pop the model of the print bed and be done with it. Uh, you must perform a few steps which do involve handling some potentially hazardous chemicals. But, you know, if you're careful and don't rush it, it's not really that bad. So, without any further ado, let's get started, shall we? As I've previously mentioned, the non-cured resin can be pretty bad for you, so you will need some personal protection. Welcome to the HEV Mark IV protective system for use in hazardous environment conditions. Automatic well, that's an overkill, but gloves are a must. So these cheap disposable nitrile gloves from hardware store work just fine. If you're particularly sensitive to the resin smell, then you may need some sort of breathing protection or a fume extraction mechanism. Different brands of resin may have weaker or stronger smells, so it's really up to you to decide if you need anything else but an open window. Just keep in mind that the medical masks that some manufacturers provide with their printers do not protect from vapors, only from small particles, so they don't really help here. It's better to have some eye protection because splashes do happen and, you know, people usually only have two eyes. Get yourself a tray to protect your table. Uh, these El Cheapo aluminum trays work just fine. Then you will need a container to wash your models in. These IKEA containers work just fine for me. Uh, some solvent and a waste container. Again, another plastic container. I tried using different washing liquids and decided to stick with uh, isopropanol, uh, at least until I get myself an ultrasonic bath. Uncle, J Uncle Jesse has a very nice video all on alternatives, uh, so link is going to be down there in the description, check it out. Uh, what else? A pair of flesh cutters is nice to have to remove supports if your model uh, has them, and you know, you mostly print with supports. Um, yeah, a syringe uh, it is really helpful in washing the uncured resin from the model interior if it is hollow and has holes. Um, a thin metal spatula to remove the models from the build plate. And well, a whole bunch of paper towels and that's pretty much it. Well, now let's put on the gloves and get started. First, you should drain as much resin as you can back into the vat. Elgo includes this small 3D printed part, which helps you to do that really easily. Just hang it like this, attach to the print platform to it, and let it sit and drain for 15, 30 minutes, or even a few hours, depending on how thick your resin is and how complex your model is. Uh, cover the printer so the resin does not cure in sunlight if your printer is close to a window like mine and to limit the amount of dust getting inside. By the way, this piece can also be found on Thingiverse, so you can make one yourself. Link is in the description. Carefully the transfer the platform to your working table, making sure not to drip resin across the room. Then, using a thin metal spatula, carefully pop the models off into the washing solution. You may try using the plastic spatula provided with the printer, but I prefer this cheap metal one. I only use the plastic scraper as a squeegee to remove resin from the print platform. Let your model soak for a minute, and meanwhile let's clean the platform. Using the plastic spatula, carefully scrape as much liquid resin from all sides into the waste container. Then 
then grab a paper towel, wet it, wet it with IPA and wipe all sides of the platform. Repeat if necessary. And by the way, do not put the paper towels in your trash yet, and I'll explain later why. It's time to remove supports. I prefer doing it before curing the model. After the resin is fully cured, they become really hard and brittle and may actually spray sharp splinters around and leave small pock marks when cut. Now gently agitate the cleaning solution. At this step your model is still relatively soft, so try not to bump it too hard. Now the model needs to be cured under a source of UV light. You can put them in direct sunlight for a few minutes or you can, can use a curing station. There are some available on the market, uh, kind of expensive option. I've seen people making their curing stations from old tabletop ovens and UV LED strips, which actually looks very nice and clean. I have a ghetto cancer ray box which is just a cardboard box covered inside with aluminum foil and with some cheapest UV LED strip I could find on Amazon. There is a prejudice or perhaps a science fact that it's better to cure the models in water. Presumably the oxygen in the air impedes the curing process somehow slowing it down. I use a beaker filled with enough warm water to cover the models. Then I put it into the box, close it, turn on the lights and set the timer for 10 to 15 minutes. Hey Google, set timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes, starting now. While our model is being cured, let's take care of the waste. The liquid resin is, is an environmental hazard, so anything with liquid resin on it needs to be cured before being put into trash. Expose the dirty paper towels to the sunlight for a few minutes for IPA to evaporate and resin to harden, then it's safe to discard them. The same applies to the waste containers. Just let the resin cure and then you can safely scrape the hardened resin out and dispose of it. Washing liquid can be reused after curing the, the dissolved resin. I usually zap it for 20 minutes in the curing box, then filter it several times through a tightly packed cotton ball and it can be reused several more times after that. Hey Google, stop. So this is how I usually post-process SLA prints. 
let me know down below in the comments if you think I'm doing something wrong or if you can suggest a better technique. I hope you liked the, today's video and you've picked up something new from it. If so, please give it a like, feel free to share it, consider subscribing to my channel if you like this kind of content, and again, your feedback is always welcome. Thanks for watching, happy tinkering, and don't forget to have fun. Bye!